commons are shared resources. What one person uses is not available for another person, but it's hard to keep other people from using it. There are lots of examples of commons, forests, most water systems, uh, pastures. Groundwater is one of the hardest type of commons to manage effectively because it's really hard to observe the water flows. And you can't easily see how one person's water use affects another or even who's connected. The farmers, they think that the water is coming out of the bore well, it's my water. But that is not the case. There's the groundwater is a common field resources where the, everyone is sharing one aquifer. Number of bore wells are doubling in every four years. And these pumps can take out a lot more water and a lot faster than the recharge is. People have to keep drilling deeper, putting down more and more bores, and the water table is falling. Those who can't afford to keep deepening, sometimes they've lost their whole savings that they've invested in these wells. I think uh, natural resources, nature conservation, this provides the playing fields on which rules and regulations emerge, where local communities have the chance to solve their own problems. So one size fits all would not work. The effort behind playing this game is to trigger discussion amongst the farmers how collectively they can use this resource, how each of their needs can be fulfilled. It's a very classic case between individual interest and a collective interest. In the sharing borewell, uh, let us assume each, each farmer has one acre of land. So you have to grow crops in rabbi season. 50 to 20, you have sufficient water for all your requirements, uh, uh, including domestic water, livestock water, everything. Let us uh, imagine you all five has required two units of water for domestic consumption. In a year, at any point of time, we are getting uh, rains. In, a, in the game, you get seven units of water recharge for every year. So after 20, uh, there is yellow color. That means uh, though you have water, that water is not uh, useful for drinking. You have to pay red color. That means uh, there is no scope for recharge. Your bore well has dried up. Then you don't have scope for uh, growing crops. They'll choose water intensive crop and uh, less water consuming crops. The major crops they are growing in that particular village. Not everybody in a village are literate. Using images helps uh, the participants to pick the crop of their choice. These are the crops uh, you selected. One farmer uh, grows peanut, no? it consumes one unit of water and gives uh, two units of uh, money. Suppose if one farmer chooses paddy, no, it consumes uh, three units of water and gives you five units of money. The farmer has to, to choose uh, cropping decision. He requires both uh, water availability and the money, how much he is getting. Time of one minute for taking decisions. Uh, so after uh, finishing that uh, decision, record keeper, he goes to all the five farmers and what each farmer has grown. In return to that, uh, he gives uh, money. We also uh, use the 100 rupee note. This makes scenario much more realistic. They get to know for the each of the crop that they are planting, how much money they are going to earn. A dice gives you a variability of the rainfall which makes it much more realistic. We play the game in two ways. In the first game, without discussion, they have to grow crops. They feel like uh, it's my own land, I have to grow crops. So without considering any other farmers. Once they hit the red zone, no, then the game will over. The second game is uh, with the discussion, with conversation, because uh, it's important uh, they take the decisions uh, together based on the water level, on their uh, own requirements. The first step in the debrief session is we call all the community uh, members and ask the participants the experience of playing this game. Trend line exercise is a good tool to know the past 30 to 40 years to current situation. So every 10 years what was happening? What are the crops people are growing? How much uh, is the bore well depth? How many bore wells are running? We would like to understand uh, what has been the uh, changes of the various crops that have grown and in turn relating it to the water resources that they have. Uh, in this way, we are able to understand what are the reasons behind uh, the fluctuation of the various water resources. 
we try to pose some pointed questions uh, uh, with the community that triggers the discussion uh, say why a particular crop has come what are the reasons behind it why the people have started to dig a bore well why do you think the rainfall alone uh, um, uh, is the key factor in this apart from the availability of the water there are many other uh, factors that go into take decision for that particular crop choice they are talking about the livelihood options they are talking about the food requirements they are talking about meeting the other needs all these factors help a particular farmer to take a decision having the women in this kind of a games brings in a unique insights uh, especially from the domestic front the women also influence the crop choices at the home level we try to elicit the uh, uh, the possible solutions from the community how do we address this question that's where the collective actions kicks in Th that is where the community tries to understand or the the awareness is created that the water resource from which they are tapping is a common pool resource it's not an individual resource mm -hmm. whatever decisions uh, that are arrived at the debrief all these decisions are again taken back to the in a formal committee these things are debated amongst the larger community this essentially leads to the formulation of the bylaws or some sort of a rules uh, which could govern this resource we were uh, using two tools one is experimental game other one is a crop water budgeting tool uh, where the more information will be given to the farmers so that farmers can take a better decision that is our strategy out of this uh, crop water budgeting uh, the farmers could able to understand the rainfall status uh, as well as the water requirement for each crop if you take that balance is there was a deficit of 20000 uh, cubic meters for the rabi crop so this kind of information we were giving from these two tools so that farmer can able to understand the situation of ground water and uh, kind of uh, crops they are to grow we played these two in 21 villages as of now during rabi season so uh, we we got three clear outcomes they are uh, collectively sitting together in the institution and uh, the institution is taking up the decision now in few villages there was a ban on uh, digging up bore wells in the few villages there was a ban on taking up the paddy uh, rabi season in the few villages uh, where the farmers they could able to switch from paddy to, uh, and tomato to uh, finger millet and groundnut if at all they grow the tomato or paddy they could have uh, dried up their uh, bore wells in the middle of the season they could have incur lot of losses in that ఇప్పుడు ఈ వరి కొద్దిగా వేసి వేరుశనగ వేస్తామనుకున్నాము ఈ మన ఈ ఎఫ్ఏ సంస్థ తరఫున వీళ్ళు మన సార్ వాళ్ళు వచ్చి వరికి ఈ నీటి మట్టం తగ్గిపోతుంది కాబట్టి వరికి నష్టం వస్తుంది మా పల్లె సంఘంలో మేము పల్లెలో అందరం అందరం కలిసి పద్దెనిమిది ఇరవై కుటుంబాలని అందరం కలిసి మాట్లాడుకున్నాం అందరం కలిసి ఒక నిర్ణయం తీసుకున్నాం అందరం అంగీకరించే తీసుకున్నాం ఆ నిర్ణయం ఒకరు పంట ఒకరు పంట లేకుండా అందరం వేరుశనగ వేసాము